We don't always think about that, but we depend on weather data every day. In the morning, we make a decision on what to wear or whether we should take an umbrella or maybe even decide not to drive because there is a warning for icy conditions on the road. On a bigger scale, weather data helps improve the efficiency in many sectors of the U.S. economy, saving industry and the general public at least $5 billion per year. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, known as NOAA, owns and operates weather satellites built and launched by NASA that help save lives and resources. Since 1960, NOAA has operated a fleet of polar orbiting environmental satellites called POSE, complemented by the higher altitude geostationary operational environmental satellites known as GOES. Together, these two satellite constellations are advancing mankind's ability to see the whole Earth continuously and predict severe weather events with greater accuracy. In 2009, NASA will launch NOAA N Prime. Operated by NOAA, N Prime will be the last in the Television Infrared Observation Satellite Series, or TIROS. NOAA M Prime is going to give us data the same as we've been getting it in the past, but its main role is continuity of service and to um, restore some of the uh, degraded instruments that we've had. So we're looking forward to a fresh satellite that has 100% of everything working and also help uh, us continue our services until the next generation of MPOS satellites that are ready. So we need this satellite to last for at least three years. Continuously delivered satellite weather data provides the building blocks for far-reaching climate and research programs. Data provided by NOAA's weather satellites has many government, commercial, and humanitarian applications. To name a few, search and rescue instruments carried on NOAA's weather satellites help save lives every day. Scientists can monitor the vegetation index to know whether crops are in stress and need water. Farmers rely on the weather forecast to know when they should plant and harvest the crops. Fishermen use weather data to decide when and where to fish. Tracking migratory animals, endangered species, volcanic eruptions, forest fires and icebergs are also a function of NOAA's weather satellites. Ships take advantage of information provided about ocean currents, streams and even icebergs to save fuel and chart safe routes. Weather satellites provide critical space environment data that warns astronauts about high solar activity so they can seek shelter in their space station. Well, these satellites that NOAA has NASA launch, they don't just benefit the U.S., they benefit everyone in the world. These satellites over the last 50 years, since 1960, have increased uh, the abilities on all fronts, and everyone has benefited. Just in so many areas, the whole world has benefited. September 9th, 1900. A devastating Category 4 storm hits Galveston, Texas without a warning. Galveston has been the scene of one of the greatest catastrophes in the world's history. The situation looked desperate. Back then, weather satellites were still an impossible dream. The lack of timely and accurate warning meant the difference between survival and death. Within these last 19 months, at least 45 satellites have circled the Earth. Some 40 of them were made in the United States of America. Transit satellites are helping our ships at sea to steer a safer course. Tyrus satellites have given us unprecedented warnings of hurricanes storms and will do the same for forest fires and icebergs. The first weather satellite, Tyros-1, was launched on April 1, 1960 from Cape Canaveral, Florida. The satellite weighed 122 kilograms and carried two TV cameras and two video recorders. The first picture was, uh, of clouds was pretty rough and was actually classified and rushed down to the White House. With the advance of science and technology, we can now be fairly certain that a Galveston storm will never be a surprise again. 
The microwave instruments on board NOAA and Prime are so sensitive that they can see Earth's surface through the clouds. As it orbits at 860 kilometers above Earth's atmosphere, NOAA and Prime sends near real-time data for evolving severe weather formations. This up-to-the-minute data is crucial to many remote parts of the world where satellite data is the only source of information on developing weather patterns. Being a polar orbiting satellite and orbiting the Earth once every 102 minutes, a huge advantage of NOAA and Prime is that it sees what's developing on the other side of Earth, thus giving an advanced warning prior to severe weather reaching land. We need to let people know right away that there's this solar flare coming, there's this hurricane, there's this tornado line uh, outbreak heading your way, or there's some winter squalls or some lake effect snows coming off the Great Lakes. These are all things that we need to let people know, you know, today or as soon as possible that that's going to happen. What's in the future? A tri-agency effort between the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, the Department of Defense and NASA, will result in the launch of a next generation highly advanced environmental watch system called ENPOSE, which will unite the present civilian and military polar orbiting programs into one pioneering system, thus saving more lives and resources. Minus 13, green board 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, go for main engine start, 1, 0, and liftoff of the Delta II rocket with NOAA in prime, continuing the legacy of data for the weather forecasts of today into the future. about 10 seconds now before we drop off the solids. The 212.5 nautical miles. Downrange distance 10.9 nautical miles. Velocity a little over 1,040 miles per hour. And we have separation of the groundlet solid motors from the vehicle. 